My big influence is first and foremost is God. Not, not just because of what I've gone through in my life, but also what I've experienced. Just being an instrument of God's work in this life gives me a lot of joy. So you, you need to generate your own source of power, whether it's from within yourself or with your environment or the people around you or your talent or your skill or whatever it is. Nothing happens without power. So first, developing your power is very important. And for me, whether it's you know, dressing a certain way so that I can, I can create a perception, talking to people in a particular way so that they can feel comfortable, which is at the heart of etiquette. Whatever your thing is, whatever your gift is, whatever it is, please add power to it. Make sure that it is powerful. Make sure that you need that fuel to be able to move. Munes is a lot of things, but he is a guy who believes in helping other people become better versions of themselves. He is also a father, he is a husband, he is a business owner, he's an entrepreneur. He is a coach, he's a trainer. He's a communication specialist. Lately, uh, he's become a media personality, family man, and he believes strongly in the power of prayer and putting God at the center of everything. I tell everyone this, I'm a guy who believes in helping other people become better versions of themselves because I know how important packaging is. Growing up, I think it was it was a lot of fun, and uh, we we played all the normal games, kati, bano, and what I remember most was unlike now, I think us kids we we had a lot more freedom, so we had, we could like move around and enjoy the best of Nairobi. I don't know whether it was a question of you know our parents didn't care or there was more safety. Honestly, I don't know. But nowadays, I think we're just more paranoid, letting our kids move around. So. You know, we, we are the sum total of the people that we spend the most of our time with and the influence that my parents have had on me, I can't, I can't stress how important that has been. And I wish I could be half the parent that they were to me. She used to say, I don't care what you do, but as long as you're not mediocre, don't just settle for, you know, the bare minimum. Always push the boundaries. And I saw that even in her work ethic. You know, the day she graduated with her PhD in, in the early 90s, I was just like, I was, a, I was a kid, but I didn't even know what a PhD was at that time. But um, she's always inspired me to keep pushing, pushing myself and pushing the limits. I know it's weird, but in the club, like I would get a call from her like in the morning, like, you know, it's prayer time. <laughs> My dad, I wouldn't say that he was a strict disciplinarian, but he, he always reminded me that it was important to be a leader, not a follower. Anytime I would come and say, oh, you know, I want to go to Kani or I want to go do this because my friends, he would always be like, listen, I don't want to hear this thing about friends. You tell me why you want to go. Ex give me a breakdown of the pros and cons of why you want to go out, and then maybe we can discuss. So it always made me think first of myself. And that concept of not being a follower, I think I owe a lot of that to my dad. And he also taught me about being organized. I, I look like I'm chaotic, but I like things in a particular way. I never grew up with, you know, this thing called black, black tax, where you have to take care of, uh, of other people. I was very fortunate that I was spared black tax. We didn't grow up, you know, like wealthy or anything, but at least we grew up comfortable and I got a good education. And having been given that, that opportunity has, has allowed me to now express myself. Nairobi's crazy. Nairobi's crazy beautiful, but Nairobi has has more friendly people, I can say that openly. I think by virtue of the fact that South Africa went through what it went through very recently coming out of apartheid, I think the level of trust that's there is still, it's still, they're still coming into their own, you know. Whereas in Nairobi, the vibe is, you know, you can speak to anybody, you can meet anybody on the street and have, start a conversation with them. My personality is a people person. I love people. I love seeing the good in people and looking for benefit of the doubt. I'll always try and engage people at their level. I really enjoyed coming back to Nairobi. Always looking for the good in others, always trying to see people for where they, where they were coming from. I used to put myself in other people's shoes nine times out of 10. So if I met you for the first time, my, my natural instinct was to try and, 
and see things from your perspective. I really like seeing people achieve their, their potential and their purpose. I'm a teacher at heart. I like to, to, to share knowledge and, 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 and see how that can help people. And when we started, we would just take anything. All I knew is that I, I didn't want to be employed. And now we're, we're very fortunate to run three businesses out of here. I started asking people if they wanted to be trained, but it was mostly because people didn't want to pay us communication retainers. Instead of us paying you, can you come and teach our people how to, how to do the things that you're going to do for us anyway? So I figured I might as well make a business out of that. So I did. We invested in a small business where we have uh, recreational facilities, a dance studio, five-a-side astroturf football pitch. There's a rock climbing thing now. We're entering that entertainment recreation space. Human beings are emotional creatures and any job where there's a human at the end, you must understand that on top of their technical professional capacities, these are people who feel. I try and have proper connections with as many people as possible. Some people will be good, some people will not, some people will be, you know, won't like my vibe, others will. And so, yeah, I'm then now influenced by the people that I meet on a daily basis. Many men, I think, are frustrated because they don't take enough time to introspect and, and understand their why. Why were you put on this earth? What purpose are you here to serve? Because time is very finite. We have a very short amount of time on this earth. We think we're going, it's this huge forever thing, but it must come to an end. Pause and just be quiet and talk to yourself because we are, I think, speaking to many men, we get afraid of looking at inside and thinking that we are failures because we look at ourselves, then we look around us and we see, oh, Charles is doing quite well, Gerald is doing quite well, what about me? I'm not doing that well and my family and my other people are looking up to me and they're looking, you know, to what I'm, I'm supposed to do. So for me, my biggest motivation and driver comes from looking within first checking in with myself. So having a purpose beyond, uh, beyond paying bills is, is, is for me the biggest motivator. And I have, I have certain key things that I'm, I, I would very much like to accomplish for myself, that I want to accomplish for myself, and now they've become a need. So now I actually need to accomplish those things. Depression starts because you think that you're alone, because you believe that you are by yourself but if you have it in the back of your mind that the ruler of this universe is with you in everything that you do that you're never alone then you don't feel worried you don't get scared you don't feel apprehensive or anxious you're just like okay fine okay it's me and you god let's go and you'll always have that level of companionship which we unfortunately try and derive from other human beings i grew up in nairobi middle class maybe lower to middle class I spent a lot of time as well in rerouting with my grandmother over the weekends. My life and their life can be part, part and parcel, so no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm training, whether I'm looking after the business, I always make sure that they, my kids, are a part of my agenda and I try as much as possible to be there for them on a regular basis so that I can instill some of the values that my parents instilled in me and some of the ones that I myself have learned now. Okay, so. <laughs> To get to that point where you're doing what you love is a blessing and I, I, never, I don't take a single day of my life for granted because with my work doing the public relations, the business development, it gives me such fulfillment and when I'm, when I'm working, I feel like I'm not working so I'm, I'm completely like in the zone. If you can think of purpose as a train, you can't just like change trains like mid-journey, like once you're on the train, you're on the train. It's now a question of where this train is going to get to, which stations it's going to stop at and so on. I've gotten on the right train. The right train with the right route. If I can think of purpose that way, I'm on the right train on the right route. In my free time, I like to take care of myself, so I'm, I'm happiest when my body is happy. And my body is happy when it's well rested, when I have exercised, I do calisthenics. The world right now is such a, such a dynamic 
place and knowing your place in it is really for me the 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 the, the, the key to to unlocking your full potential so um, try figure out your place in the world and if, if you can help if you can get help in the form of creating a relationship with the creator of that universe uh, you, you you'll be okay um, and God bless everybody <laughs>